ancient cave and tomb of Cacique El Quibian Malchia. The amazing story of the discovery of the ancient tomb of Cacique Malchia began when Marcos Montezuma, a young Nabe man, was digging a pozo, water well, on a hill and hit a carved rock in the shape of a rectangle slab. As he hit the rock slab with his pick, it made an empty echo sound. At first, Mr. Montezuma thought he hit an old septic tank. He then used his pick to pry open and lift the open rock slab to expose what was unearthed. And to his amazement, he found the tomb of the Cacique Malchia. Mr. Montezuma went into the tomb to find ancient relics, including ceramic pots filled with animal skins wrapped up with ancient writings and hieroglyphics and gold pieces including a wooden chest gilded covered in gold next to the mummified cacique El Quibian Malchia. After Mr. Montezuma told his friends and families of the discovery and he reported it to the authorities. Vino a trabajar con mi hermano a hacer un hueco, entonces estaba trabajando de suelo, de hacer, terminando de hacer hueco y golpeamos este, una piedra y escuchamos un ruido, era la cueva de cacique antigua. Ahí entonces encontramos un poco cosas de oro y un poco y cajón de oro, imagen de, de oro, un vacío y un poco muro, ahí encontramos ahí en ese, en ese hueco. Yo vine a trabajar con mi jefe y jefe me dijo que tenía que hacer un hoyo y, y en, bueno, yo dije a mi hermano que vamos a hacerlo porque estos jefes son muy buena gente y él son cumplidos y vamos a hacerlo. Entonces cuando empecé ya a trabajar con él y con, 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 con Sacho y empecé a trabajar con mi hermano, bueno me animé mucho y empecé, yo dije a mi hermano que vamos a hacerlo, entonces empezamos a hacerlo. Él, él estaba más rápido que yo y me fui avanzando también. Entonces él empezó, empezó el contrato del cuyo hasta avanzó hasta el suelo y después él empezó a ayudarme también. Empezó a bajar, nosotros juntos bajamos el suelo. Ya nosotros estábamos terminando todo, entonces ya estábamos terminando. Entonces de repente o, oímos un sonido. Entonces preocupamos, entonces pedí luz mirarlo, entonces estaba oscuro, entonces pedí luz, entonces miré y mientras que había ahí figuras bastante de oro, entonces ahí había también, también Mru y había ahí también la figura de tigre, cual aguanta también. Y paginando manchete, pero estaba figura no en el grupo de todo el tablino manchete era todo. All right, we're on the other side of the entrance to the well. And again, there's an amazing story about how the well was discovered. As a young Nagobi man was digging for a well here. And as he was di digging the well, a pozo, um, his pick hit a rectangular stone. And behind the stone, as he hit it, there was a hollow echo. Not knowing what it was, he took his pick and he pried open opened the tomb and to much to his amazement he discovered the tomb a Cacique Malchi. I'm going down into the tomb now and it's, it's quite dark as you enter into the tomb. The walls of the tomb are aligned with different statues and that represent the um, Calciques uh, nobles and the El Kibia. The tomb of Cacique El Quibian Machia is in the cave that was sealed at both ends with rocks and mud. Today, the two ends of the cave are open and tourists can enter the tomb of Cacique Machia to discover the hidden mysteries and treasures of an ancient pre-Columbian lost civilization. I will present to you evidence of the discovery of the Ark of the Covenant found here in Panama. So we're leaving the bead on our way to Volcan to El Kavian's burial site that's 
was found just a few years ago and is, is a, a very interesting place. Here we are going up the mountains, passing this lovely scenery, lovely scenery. What's that over there? Oh, wow. Anyway, uh, where the uh, tomb was located was on Volcan Baru. Some people know it as Volcan Chiriqui, but it's uh, it's quite a high mountain, over 11,000 feet high. And because Panama is such a thin country, on a clear day on that mountain, you can see both coasts, the Pacific coast and the Atlantic coast as well. It's beautiful. We'll be there shortly. And there's, there's the mountain rising above the clouds. So here we are at the cave of the Kasiki Malchia, the tomb actually. This area here was covered in with stones. You can see some of the stones here that were covering this hole and they've been removed, revealing another entry to the tomb. So here we are at the entrance to Kasiki Malchia's tomb on the other side of the, well, where we were previously. And what happened here was that several years ago, uh, Montezuma, uh, a farm worker named Marcos Montezuma, was digging a well. And he hit some stone that sounded hollow. He thought that he'd struck upon the top portion of a septic tank, uh, but upon discovery, found the Kasiki's tool. So, here we are at the eastern entrance to the tomb of Kasiki Machia. There are two entrances. The other side is walled over. It was like a, a wall on the side of a mountain that was covered with stones the Indians had, had concealed the, the tomb. But five or six years ago, a farm worker by the name of Marco Montezuma was digging a well for the property over here. And he struck something that sounded hollow. He thought that it was maybe a septic system. But upon discovery, this is what he found. The tomb of Kaziki Machia. Come with me down into the tomb. We'll look around. We'll see what's down here. The tomb. Come with me. Come on, let's be careful. Hmm. Okay. Ooh, this has to be jade. There were, there were lots of gold pieces uh, found in here too, but um, one of the main universities in the country uh, seemed to have gotten uh, authority to uh, take those away and to protect them you know, somewhere. But this is jade, jade stone. This is beautiful. And further along, Mm. We have urns, ah. and here, look at this, this is beautiful, ah. another one, for his long journey. They 
say this goes back to 500 years BC. So this is like 2,500 years old. We're standing in history, antiquity. Soon, many people will be coming here to see this grand discovery. It's very interesting. The tombstone of Kaziki Machia. Nogobe, Nogobe Bugle, Indian Chia. Here we have what looks like the thinker. Oh. Who said these people weren't philosophers? Hmm. The recent discovery of gold plates in an archaeological site located in the ancient tomb found in Panama reveals the past of the ancient history of the inhabitants of Panama. In 2011, in Panama, a major discovery was made. A pre-Columbian cemetery was discovered with the remains of bodies, weapons, and artifacts made of gold. In the Cacique tomb, archaeologists found the sarcophagus of the Cacique El Quibian Malchia. The sarcophagus is a large rectangle wooden box that was covered in gilded gold. The layer of gold varied in thickness. From a heavy sheet for the face and the wings of the two cherubs to a thin layer of the very finest gold leaf set over the sarcophagus. The four rings at the four feet of the sarcophagus are made of bronze covered in gilded gold. When the seal of the lid of the sarcophagus was broken and slowly lifted away from its base, there was a gasp from the archaeologist. What they found underneath was a various ancient parchment scrolls wrapped in a skin of ocelot, Leopardus partilis, which is a leopard, like a wildcat that is a hundred centimeters big and it roams in the jungles of Panama. These ancient scrolls reveal the history of the ancient King Machia who lived around 600 BC. This major archaeological discovery of the great escape of King Machia, a Hebrew prince who took the Ark of the Covenant and the ancient scrolls with his family and other Jewish royals, including Jewish priests, before the siege of Babylon around the year 600 BC. The Jewish group fled Jerusalem and went to Phoenicia and boarded three Phoenician ships, then migrated to the Americas, taking with them the Ark of the Covenant and the ancient scrolls. After the discovery of the ancient tomb, the name given to the archaeological department to label and identify the tomb was Tomb 13. When the ancient Panamanian Tomb 13 was discovered inside the tomb, was the sarcophagus of a pre-Columbian king with the name Malchia. On one side of the sarcophagus was the Ark of the Covenant and the scrolls. Some of the scrolls had been written in ancient Egyptian, Phoenician, and Hebrew languages. The official file registered to this item is Alpac 2B. In this ancient archaeological specimen, dating back around 590 years before Christ, was one of the 30 rows discovered in the excavation site, Tomb 13. According to the archaeological translation of the ancient text writing on the Alpac skin, Alpac 2b, our archaeologist team was able to identify the history and the name of the king found mummified and dressed in ancient Hebrew royal robes wearing a crown and jewelry on the body. The first Gebel scroll parchment from tomb 13 translated. Translation of the Gebel or Gebel, Hebrew, is an animal hide that has been prepared as a writing material in Jewish scribble documents, in particular a Sefer Torah, or we may call it a Torah scroll. The first Gebel scroll parchment from tomb 13 translated into English from Egyptian and Hebrew. The Egyptian hieroglyphics make up a Hebrew word, or words, and names. Each Egyptian hieroglyphic is drawn in a method to read in a Hebrew pronunciation letter, so when reading the Egyptian hieroglyphics, 
it will form Hebrew words and names. Each hieroglyphic is pronounced with a letter. For instance, when looked at the man holding what it seems to be a stick or a vase, more like a stick, upright 90 degree angle stick, it forms the letter Y spells out the name Jeremiah if you look at the hieroglyphics Jeremiah or Almar after looking at the hieroglyphics it reads Jeremiah said they are four priests to carry the Ark of the Covenant if we take a look at the hieroglyphics it actually reads, Jeremiah say, Ani Notin Le Machia at Aaron Habert. If you look at the first bird, that is the letter A, Jeremiah said, Ani Notin Le Machia at Aaron Habert. The professional linguist Dr. Samuel Aaron Weinstein, specializing in ancient Egyptian dialects, has also been a great help translating the ancient scrolls. Various records of continual timeline of different authors preserved on the Alpac 2B, Alpaca Skin Row, which is one of the 30 rows discovered in the excavation site, Tomb 13. Starting with 590 BC before Christ, the king's son, whom was identified as Malchia. The name of the mummified king has been identified as Malchia, and from what we have interpreted so far in this archaeological specimen, Alpac 2b, the Ark of the Covenant was smuggled to Mesoamerica by Malchia, his wives, his priests, and his family, using the Phoenicians to migrate. I will present to you evidence of the discovery of the Ark of the Covenant found here in Panama. Stories told by Spanish writers who chronicled the conquest and the ancestral customs that continue on in the indigenous villages in modern Panama are valuable sources of information for learning more about what life was like for these powerful warriors. Panama, a narrow strip of land 700 kilometers long which connects South America with Central America. The history of the Ark of the Covenant. According to the second Maccabees, at the beginning of chapter two, the records show that it was the prophet Jeremiah who, prompted by a divine message, gave orders to the tent of meeting and the Ark of the Covenant should be taken out of Jerusalem to a safe place to hide from the invasion of Babylon. Jeremiah sent the four priests to carry the Ark of the Covenant to a safe place in the cave. Jeremiah said that the Ark of the Covenant is hidden and the place shall remain unknown. He said unto God finally gathers his people together and shows mercy to them. 2 Maccabees chapter 2 verses 4 through 8. According to the Phoenician history, the Ark of the Covenant was secretly taken out of Jerusalem around 600 BC and transported to Tyre, Phoenicia. Malchia and his family brought many Jews with him to escape the Babylonian invasion, and they all boarded three Phoenician ships in Tyre, Phoenicia. The Ark of the Covenant was also on board in one of those three Phoenician ships, and was transported through the Mediterranean Sea. Sailing through the Mediterranean Sea provided routes for trade for the Phoenicians. Also, a perfect escape route for the Jews to carry the Ark of the Covenant to a safe place hidden from the Babylonian soldiers. Once the three Phoenician ships made it to the end of the Mediterranean Sea, at the point Iberian Peninsula, they headed out into the Atlantic. The Phoenician ships departed Phoenicia with various passengers on board, and some of those passengers were escaping Babylonian soldiers. A passenger on board of one of the Phoenician ships was called Malchia, and he left the nation Phoenicia with a chest of gold and various gold relics from the region of Phoenicia around 600 years before Christ. Malchia seems to have been in exile, escaping from the Babylonians with his treasures. 
Once Mashiach arrived in Panama, he formed a group that was also passengers on the Phoenician ships, and he set himself up as a king over them. The mummified body in the tomb is Malchia, and his corpse was placed in the tomb with the golden chest and other Phoenician artifacts. According to the ancient writings on the goat skins, Malchia set sail with the Phoenicians, and there were three Phoenician ships full of immigrants. The three ships left Tyre, the largest and the most important city-state of Phoenicia, located both on the Mediterranean coast as well as the nearby island. Their voyage went through the Mediterranean, passing Carthage, and then from Cadiz, Spain, and then three Phoenician ships set sail across the North Atlantic Ocean until they anchored in Laguna de Chiriqui, Panama. After the three Phoenician ships landed in Panama, all the passengers carried Machio's treasures to Volcan Baru, and there they made a village they called Saraiva. Three thousand years ago, in the holy city of Jerusalem, King Solomon ordered the construction of a magnificent temple. Its purpose was to house one of the holiest objects of the Old Testament faith, a golden chest known as the Ark of the Covenant, and the stones on which the Ten Commandments were reputedly engraved. For centuries the stones lay safe inside Solomon's temple, but then, inexplicably, the chest and the stone tablets disappear from history. How and why they were lost is one of the greatest riddles of the Bible. I'm absolutely sure that I know where the contents of the Ark are. The Bible says that Moses went up to the mountain to talk to God for 40 days which point God gave Moses for the children of Israel the Ten Commandments and instructions to how to build a box to contain them. This box called the Ark of the Covenant was a box made of wood covered in gold with some gold statuary above it. If one thinks about it carefully, the box was man-made. Yes, according to God's instructions, but nevertheless made by man. The Mediterranean Sea, 5th century BC, a great commercial network created by the Phoenicians. In hundreds of archaeological sites scattered around the Mediterranean, objects are often found that are completely extraneous to local civilizations and cultures. An Egyptian amulet in Greece, a Greek vase in Africa, a huge multitude of goods moving from one country to another and another had to be transported and traded in some sort of systematic way. And it is the Phoenicians with their tall headdresses, their formidable ships, their skills in trading, and their courage on the high seas who made a name for themselves in this pursuit. We'll see how the Phoenicians took on a diverse civilization of cultures and wove them together to become the undisputed lords of the sea. The trail must start with what the Bible says about the loss of the Ark. What is quite startling is that there is nothing in the Bible that explicitly says that the Ark disappeared. It seems to just fade from history. And they shall make an Ark of acacia wood. Two and a half cubits shall be its length, a cubit and a half its width, and a cubit and a half its height and you shall overlay it with pure gold. Inside and out you shall overlay it, and shall make on it a moulding of gold all around. 
and you shall put into the ark the testimony which I will give you. You shall make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two and a half cubits shall be its length and a cubit and a half its width. And you shall make two cherubim of gold of hammered work you shall make them at the two ends of the mercy seat. Make one cherub at one end and the other cherub at the other end and you shall make the cherubim at the two ends of it one piece with the mercy seat. And the cherubim shall stretch out their wings above covering the mercy seat with their wings and they shall face one another. The faces of the cherubim shall be toward the mercy seat. You shall put the mercy seat on top of the ark and in the ark you shall put the testimony that I will give you. And there I will meet with you, and I will speak with you from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim which are on the ark of the testimony, about everything which I will give you in commandment to the children of Israel. After the death of this great king Machia, his body was placed in the tomb found in the mountains of Vulcan, and with the mummified corpse, were placed rows of parchment of goat skins and many other ancient relics. Okay, now we're going to go visit the ancient tomb of Cacique El Kibia Machia in the mountains of Volcan Boru. Hello, I'm standing here on the Pan American Highway, uh, fixing ahead of the Volcan where the tomb of uh, Cacique tomb is. If you go this way, about 45 minutes, you'll get the coast to the Okay, we're driving up the road to Balkan Baru, also known as Volcan de Chiriqui. It is the tallest mountain in Panama. It's uh, 3,747 uh, meters, which is about 11,398 feet. At the height, it's um, because of the, the height and the width of Panama, at the very top, you can actually see the Pacific Ocean and the uh, uh, Gulf Oil at the same time. The amazing story of the discovery of the ancient tomb of Cacique Malchia began when Marcus Montezuma, a young Nagobi man, was digging a poso or water well on a hill and he hit a carved rock in the shape of a rectangular slab. As he hit the rock slab with his pick, it made an echo or hollow sound. At the first, Montezuma thought that he had found an old septic tank. He then used his pick to pry open the, and lift up the rock in the slab to expose what was underneath, and to his amazement, he found the tomb. Akasike Machia. Now we're going to proceed through the tomb and let you see the opening on this end and also the opening on the other end. We're coming outside the tomb now, and uh, sometimes you run into bats in there, won't know what came through. Just went by a duck and it hit the side of my ear. It kind of scared me a little bit when you jump. Hi, I am Dr. Maria Rosario, and I am an anthropologist. And here we have one of the items that was found in the Cacican tomb. Here we have a parchment scroll with hieroglyphics that we were able to translate. Here on this side, we have one of the boxes that were found in the Cacique tomb, which is gilded in gold.
right now we're standing in front of the archaeological site called Bariles. The Casica tomb is not too far away from the site Bariles. And here we are in an excavation done in 2001 by a group of German archaeologists in the site called Bariles. I'm standing here with Enna Hawks, and she has that National Geographic magazine from 1950. Enna? Okay, yes. This uh, magazine has a lot of information, very special by the National Geographic group. This uh, Dr. Sterling with uh, some uh, helping, uh, also checking and date pieces from the uh, city of Barrile in 1949. The ceremonial center, uh, 600 before Christ. And here is a kind of cave where the National Geographic discovery the, the altar. He's here cleaning the table. We're in the town Volcan and we'll be going to the ancient cave and tomb of Cacique El Quibian Machia. And this is where it all began. When Marco Montezuma and his brother were digging for a well, they heard an echo. When they opened the rock slab, they found this amazing cave. This whole area was covered with rock and mud. After excavation, we were able to explore this ancient cave and tomb. As we enter this ancient tomb, I will show you some of the relics that were discovered. In this part of the cave is the tomb of the cacique. Inside, we found the sarcophagus and inside was his mummified body, which is over 2,600 years old. The sarcophagus was gilded in gold, which was an ancient practice to perfectly preserve the content inside the tomb. In the scrolls, we were able to identify the cacique's name, Machia, and where he came from. The translation of the scrolls allowed us to identify the people that followed the great cacique. And here we are at the other end of the cave. And these were some of the rocks that covered this side of the cave. Good evening. To start with, I will tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Dr. Maria Rosario, and I am an anthropologist. I specialize in the research of pre-Columbian civilization in Central America. I would like to thank those from the Foundation of the Castilla de Oro who organized this archaeological convention here today in Panama. On the early morning around 5 a.m. on the 13th of October, 2011, two young indigenous men, Marcos Montezuma and his brother Rufredo, started the day like any other on the Comarca Nave Bugle Reservation. These two brothers decided to head downtown and look for work. It was common for Marcos and his brother to visit the farms and ask for work. This day, a farmer who had known the two brothers and it worked for him in the past, had invited them again to work on his farm. This time, the farmer asked the two Navi men to dig a water well, or as we say, un pozo. However, what Marcos Perfredo were not expecting while digging the water well was to stumble on the greatest archaeological discovery in the world. 
What makes this archaeological discovery so important is the evidence found in the tomb of a mummified great cacique called Machia. This mummified cacique was a member of a lost civilization that discovered the Americas over 2,000 years before Christopher Columbus. Throughout the archaeological international community, this discovery was raised many questions and excitement. The first discovery of pre-Columbian artifacts that proved the Phoenician discovered Panama before Christopher Columbus. In the tomb of Cacique El Quilian Machia, the archaeologists found two golden chests. One is a sarcophagus with ancient scrolls inside. The scrolls were preserved perfectly because of the sealed sarcophagus covered in gold and the tomb was sealed with volcanic rocks, keeping a perfect cool temperature all year round. In the ancient scrolls, the hieroglyphics tells the history of the existence of a Phoenician community living in Volcán Baru Chiriquí around 2,600 years ago. This group of Phoenicians set sail from the Middle East and landed in Panama. The ancient sarcophagus is made in an Egyptian designed rectangular box and covered in gold. The sarcophagus was also connected to another wooden rectangular box which is also covered in gilded gold. The layer of gold varied in thickness from heavy sheet for the face and wings of the two winged mat to a thin layer of sheet of the finest gold leaf over the sarcophagus. The two winged mat was also personified as a goddess regulating the stars in Egyptian mythology. These two ancient golden artifacts were taken out of the tomb of the Cacique and Matia and sent to a scientific laboratory owned by Fort David Museum. Thank you. The archaeologists assigned to examining the two ancient golden chests never could imagine what they would find inside. When the seal of the lid of the sarcophagus was broken and slowly lifted away from its base, there was a gasp from the archaeologists. What they found underneath was the mummified remains of the cacique El Quilian Machia, and also perfectly preserved various ancient parchment scrolls wrapped in the skin of the Orcelot. When the archaeologists opened the second ancient wooden chest, they found ancient religious relics of Hebrew origins. At this time, I will not go into details regarding those ancient religious artifacts. Found in the second golden chest, the specimens were still under close examination. But I say those items found have confounded even our best forensic anthropologists and the scientists so much that there is nothing on this earth to compare with those findings. I am referring to the items in the second chest that are living organisms and those organisms are so well preserved with no form of nourishment needed to sustain them. There is no fungus or bacteria inside the chest, so it is a very unusual environment that preserves the living organism. We still have not yet identified those li living organisms. But when the forensic scientists do, they will release their findings to the public. The tomb of the Cacique Quilian Machia is in a cave that was sealed at both ends with rock and mud, so it, so it created a perfect environment to preserve the ancient artifacts found inside. In Central America, the greatest threat to archaeological sites in rural areas is the lack of understanding of how to preserve those sites from being destroyed by earth-moving equipment like agricultural machinery. Many farmers have accidentally destroyed fragile ancient 
archaeological relics. When archaeology became integrated into the planning process and farmers were made responsible for recording archaeological sites for destruction conditions requiring archaeological recording, such as excavation, have been an integral part of the process. Such conditions are only applied when regarded as necessary by the professional archaeologists advising the local farmers. However, in many cases, the farmers have not been given the resource to educate on how to identify ancient relics on their lands. We hope in the near future that we can set up workshops to try to educate the farmers on how to protect the archaeological sites from damage before any form of excavation. Thank you for attending this meeting, and if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them after the meeting.